Whether you want to be in a part like Snow or Waltz of the Flowers or perhaps someone in the party scene, this video is just for you, so stay tuned and let's get into it. and welcome to Sound Like Lifestyle. If you're new here, my name is Olivia and I'm a lifelong ballerina and classical musician. I usually post videos on here about how to dance the life of a complete beginner level, as well as lifestyle vlogs and self-improvement tips, so I'm so glad that you're here. Today's video, we're going to be learning all about how to join the Nutcracker or perhaps a different type of ballet production as an adult beginner. As someone with a long history in dance, I'm excited to share all my tips and tricks that I've learned, as well as research so that you can be fully prepared and ready to go for your audition. So I went ahead and wrote down a bunch of tips on my phone so that I don't forget anything, so I hope you don't mind me referencing back and forth. But our step number one is, well, you need to join a ballet school or find an audition. Sometimes different schools or programs have open auditions to dancers. What you should do is go online and research different ballet schools in your area. I'm sure that you'll find a bunch of different options, but you need to definitely narrow things down. Make sure that number one, um, the ballet school is close enough where you feel comfortable driving or commuting there somehow. Two, you want to make sure that the adult classes or the class for your level is at a time that you can make it. I know as an adult, a lot of us have jobs or have to take care of children or have other responsibilities. And there are some ballet schools that have adult classes in the mornings. And there are some that have classes in the evenings and there are some that have classes in the middle of the day. So you really have to make sure that, you know, the school that you pick, the schedule that they have in their program matches with your lifestyle. I'm putting this video out in late September, which I'd say a lot of ballet schools tend to have their Nutcracker auditions around the September, October timeframe, but it really depends and varies on the school that you're looking for. So if you already missed the auditions for the school that you would prefer to go to, don't worry, it is possible to work something out with the instructors as sometimes they're a bit open to including more people into the program so that the uh, performance can look more lively. I've volunteered as background characters and it was so much fun and there isn't as much stress. And it can also be a really great way to get over stage fright or if you've never been on stage before, if you've missed auditions, reach out to the ballet program and ask, hey, do you need anyone to help liven up the scene and party scene? Perhaps you could be a, a mom, a dad, a big sister, perhaps a nanny. Um, feel free to get creative and I really don't see why they, they would say no to it. And you know, if for some reason it can't work out, then that's completely fine and perhaps you can try at a different school. Now step number two is practicing. So whether you're preparing for an audition day or auditions have already happened, you should still continue to practice at home and own your ballet skills. Whether you have years under your belt or just a few months or a few days, Practicing is always a great idea. So once you've joined a ballet school, of course you'll be practicing at their lessons according to your schedule, but if you would like to brush up on additional skills, I do offer a completely free beginner ballet course on how to dance ballet. There's no experience needed, and all the lessons go in order where you can start from the most basics of ballet to gradually learning more complex things like pirouettes and more um, intermediate techniques and jumps. So if you're interested in learning and practicing on your own or perhaps supplementing your school classes, you can go ahead and click my playlist above or down below in the description. Now for those of you who are auditioning, I have a few tips for you so that you feel the most prepared for that special day. Throughout the years, dance auditions that I've experienced for the Nutcracker are typically in the format of a class. So the more you go to class at your ballet school, the more you'll feel um, used to being in that space and being taught by that specific instructor or perhaps the specific style of dance that your school teaches. Now, of course, presentation. Sometimes certain dance schools will require certain attire, for example, having a ballet belt, a specific color of flowers in your hair, perhaps specific makeup. So definitely be sure to read all the instructions for the audition that you're preparing for. And lastly, for auditions, I highly recommend that you get there as early as possible. Of course, don't camp out there overnight, but you should definitely arrive with plenty of time to warm up, stretch, ground yourself in the space, and be ready to go. There's nothing worse than rushing and hurrying and being all frazzled before an audition because you're running late. And also, it's not a great look because an audition day is really you trying to show your best to whoever is judging the auditions and you want to make sure that you arrive your best 
and be on time. So after the auditions are done, I have another tip for you all. If they announce the parts aloud, please don't show any disappointment or negative feelings when they announce your part because every single part in a production is special and important in its own way. So it's really important to trust um, what your instructor feels is best for you and to be really grateful for being able to dance in a production because not everyone gets to do that and it's a really special time. So be sure that if you are in a group of people and they announce all the parts to be happy for yourself and for others in the parts that everyone gets because at the end of the day it's a big teamwork and collaboration and you are all working towards putting on a beautiful production which is an amazing thing. So now that you've auditioned, you've gotten a role, it's time for rehearsals. Now rehearsals are such an important part of a ballet production because they help keep everyone working towards the production and help teach you the choreography and the stage presence that you need for the show. But I do have a very important tip and I highly recommend this to everyone is to make friends. Of course it's important to make friends in different activities that interest you, but also for ballet, if for some reason you miss a rehearsal and you you know, you know want to make sure that you're up to date on the choreography, it would be great to have a group chat or at least one other buddy who could help film the moves that you missed and send them to you. And of course you can also return the favor and do the same for one of your peers if they miss class. So my next tip for rehearsals is making sure that you have everything you need. Bring all your hair supplies, any additional outfit accessories you might need. For example, a long character skirt or perhaps a practice tutu. Uh, whatever your dance instructor um, tells you that you might specifically need, definitely bring them. Um, I also recommend that if you are on point that you always have your point shoes with you. Um, you never know, even if you've been cast in one role, there could be a day where perhaps something happens where they need to fill in a spot in another role and if you have your point shoes with you and it's a point dancing role then you're in luck and you might get to join. So always be prepared and perhaps a bit over prepared just in case if something unexpected comes your way. Sometimes rehearsal days can be really, really long, so definitely pay attention to the schedule given to you by your specific ballet school. I also recommend bringing plenty of water, perhaps a protein bar, some sort of light snack, perhaps any prescriptions that you need to bring, and plan accordingly so that you can feel fueled up and ready to go. And finally, step number five is show day, or multiple show days if your school does your show in multiple performances. So for show day, I have plenty of tips for you. Definitely take an inspiration from the rehearsal tips. You should make sure that you're completely prepared when it comes to food, water, prescriptions, all those things to make sure that your body is ready to take on the day. Now, in addition to this, also showing up early. You wanna make sure that you have enough time to park, figure out where to go. Sometimes, you know, finding the dressing room can be a little bit complicated, so you wanna give yourself enough time, uh, maybe like, 20 minutes extra to find your bearings. Also, usually in dressing rooms, the seating is first come, first served. I've had certain circumstances where it's kind of hard to find a chair and you don't want to have to be standing or sitting on the floor. So really, the earlier you get there, the better. Another tip for show day is making sure that you bring the correct makeup that's specified by your teacher. And also, don't forget the little details of the costumes that you have. For example, you don't want to forget the little arm um, frilly bands, I'm forgetting the technical term, but there's little frilly arm bands that often come with ballet costumes and you don't want to go on stage without that. So make sure that before you go on stage, that while you're getting settled in, you have all your items ready to go and that you make sure that your costume has all the accessories that you need. A really big thing that a lot of dancers forget are performance earrings. So this is a great example of a performance earring. Now there may be exceptions, but traditionally a round earring like this is what is seen on stage. You also want to make sure that you warm up properly and stay hydrated throughout the day. Typically there will be a huge group warm up before a performance, but if you are, for example, not there in time for that or can't be there, or perhaps your school doesn't offer that, you can always grab your dance buddies and go warm up either in the dressing room or in the hallways or perhaps even on stage if you're allowed to be on stage. Now my last tip for being in a Nutcracker performance is to really enjoy the moment. It takes so much preparation and dedication to get to this day 
and it's something really special. It's definitely important to capture the moment both in your mind and your memories and perhaps on your camera so that you can remember this for years to come. So please share with me your thoughts. I'd love to hear them and also provide advice to you if you have any more questions about auditioning. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on the notifications, all those good things so that you can stay in the loop for my future videos. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.